Welcome to another tutorial on TwinCAD automation software from ControlX Engineering. In our last tutorial, we explored Beckoff's product offerings. Specifically, we looked at their line of digital and analog I.O. terminals. Today, we will learn how to integrate the I.O. terminals in a PLC project. We will create a new PLC project from scratch, configure some I.O. terminals, and implement them in our PLC project. At the end of today's tutorial, you should be able to easily integrate and use I.O. terminals in your PLC projects link your PLC variables to the I.O. channels, and be able to use the physical devices connected to the terminals in your PLC logic. So let's get started. Let's look at our setup first. Our PLC will be programmed on the CX5130, which is an embedded Intel Atom-based IPC with TwinCAT3 XAR or runtime. To form our station to connect the I.O. terminals, we will use the EK1100 EtherCAT coupler. A station consists of a coupler, and any number of EtherCAT terminals that are automatically detected and individually displayed in the process image. A coupler is required in order to connect EtherCAT terminals to an EtherCAT network. This coupler relays the communications from the higher level EtherCAT network to the terminals, or functions as a master itself and generates telegrams. The EK1100 has two RJ45 sockets. The upper Ethernet interface is used to connect the coupler to the network. The lower socket serves for the optional connection of further EtherCAT devices in the same segment. The system and field supply, each 24 volt DC, is provided directly at the coupler and the IPC on the terminal points with the red and blue markings. The attached EtherCAT terminals are supplied with the current required for communication from the supplied system voltage. The coupler can supply a maximum of 2 amps. If higher current is required due to the higher number of terminals, power feed terminals such as EL9410 have to be integrated. The field supply is forwarded to the individual I.O. components via the power contacts with up to 10 amps. For programming, we will use our engineering laptop with TwinCAT 3.1 XAE installed on the top port of the IPC called X000. Also, please note that we could have very well connected the I.O. terminals directly to the IPC. I chose to use the EK1100 coupler to demonstrate how EtherCAT networks can be extended using couplers. As I mentioned earlier, the eBus couplers require a 24 volt DC supply for their operation. The connection is made by means of the upper spring loaded terminals labeled 24 volt and 0 volt. The supply voltage is used by the bus coupler electronics and for direct voltage generation for the eBus. The voltage generation for the eBus takes place in a DC DC converter without electrical isolation. The coupler supplies the eBus with a maximum of 2000 milliamp eBus current. Power feed terminals are to be inserted if the added terminals require more current. The bottom six connections can be used to feed the supply for the peripherals. The current load via the power contacts may not exceed 10 amps. The supply line must therefore be protected by a 10 amp slow blow fuse. The bottom two connectors labeled PE are for ground connections. Next, let's take a look at the diagnostic LEDs on the coupler. There are four green LEDs. The top two green LEDs indicate the operating voltage US and power contact voltage UP. The bottom right LED indicates the run state of the EtherCAT state machine. It has three states. Off indicates that the bus coupler is an initialization state. Flashing indicates pre-op state. Single flash indicates safe op state. And finally, solid on indicates that the coupler is in operational state. The bottom left green LED indicates the state of the field bus connection. It also has three states. Off indicates no connection to the internal eBus. On indicates a connection to the eBus. And flashing indicates active communication with the internal eBus. Now that we understand the coupler, let's explore the I.O. terminals that we'll be working with today. In today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating the configuration of one terminal of each kind, digital input, digital output, analog input, and analog output terminals. The digital input terminal EL1809 operates on a 24 volt logic level. So a 24 volt nominal signal on the input channels will be interpreted as a logic true. If you recall from part one of this tutorial on how to access the product information from Beckoff's website, you will see that an input voltage in the range of 11 to 30 volts is considered as a high signal, and an input voltage in the range of minus 3 to 5 volt is considered as a low signal. The digital output terminal EL2809 is also a 24 volt logic level terminal. Each output channel can provide up to 500 milliamp of current. So it's good to drive small control relays and LED pilot lamps directly. The output channels can be turned on or off by simply assigning the respective linked variable to true or false in the PLC program. Next, let's see how to work with the analog I.O. terminals in the PLC. Let's start with the analog output terminal EL4104. 
This terminal has four channel outputs, which generates an output signal in the range of 0 to 10 volts, corresponding to the value of the linked variable. The analog output value is represented by the int data type, which has a resolution of 16 bit, including the sign. This means that the effective resolution is 15 bits, and this gives us a total of 32,768 data points. Effectively, 0 volt is represented by integer value of 0, and 10 volts is represented by integer value of 32,767. Any output voltage in this range can thus be generated by applying the appropriate integer value to the linked variable. For example, to generate an output of 3 volts, the variable must have a value of 9,830, as given by the scaling equation. For our analog input example, we will be using a time-of-flight laser sensor with a 4020 milliamp analog output. For reading this sensor, we will use the two-channel EL3152 analog input terminal. The sensor will be connected to channel 1 as shown. Next, let's hop onto TwinCat and start coding. Hello, it's Andrew here and I'll be walking you through the steps to incorporate the I.O. terminals in TwinCat. First, let's head over to the Systems node in the Solution Explorer to connect to the XAR runtime on the CX5130 IPC. Click on the Choose Target button and then search Ethernet. From here, let's do a broadcast search and choose the adapter to which the IPC is connected. Uncheck the irrelevant adapters and leave the connected adapter box checked. TwinCat will scan the adapter and list all connected IPCs. Choose the IPC to add the route. In our case, I had already added the route earlier, so we can just close this dialog box. Select the IPC and click OK. We should now be connected to the selected runtime IPC as shown here. Next, let's head over to the I.O. section to add the terminals. Make sure we're in config mode. You can tell we're in config mode by the blue gear icon in the status bar. Right-click on the devices and do a scan. Here, we're only interested in the terminals connected to the coupler on port X000. I'll unselect the other options and click OK. When prompted to scan for boxes, select Yes. We'll skip the Activate Free Run and say No to close this dialog box. Here, we can see the EK1100 EtherCAT coupler with the four connected terminals. We can expand the EK1100 to reveal the terminals connected to the coupler. Let's head over to the EtherCAT tab and check out the EtherCAT topology. We can see the online topology to see the status of the EtherCAT slave devices. They're all showing that they're healthy. Good. Let's go offline and close the topology box. Next, Let's head over to the PLC and create our variables to link to the I.O. Under GVLs, let's create a new global variable list and call it GVL underscore I.O. I'll quickly create the variables for linking to the various digital and analog input and output terminals. Next, let's do a build to compile our variable list. Build succeeded. All looks good. Now, we can link our variables to the appropriate I.O. terminals. Let's link the EL1809 digital input terminal. We can select all 16 channels as shown and do a multi-link. Select all the 16 elements of the variable array from the list and click OK. Our variables are now linked with the appropriate input channels of the EL1809 terminal. Next, let's repeat this step with the EL2809 digital output terminal. Highlight all the 16 output channels and select the Change Multilink option again. From the dialog box, choose all the 16 elements of the digital output variable array as shown and click OK to link them. All looks good. Now, for the EL3152 two channel analog input terminal. Here, we're only linking one input channel. Click on the linked to button and choose the correct variable from the list. Select the takeover checkboxes and press OK to link it. Similarly, we can link channel two. Lastly, let's link the four channel analog output terminal EL4104 using similar steps. Now, 
that all variables have been linked, we have to activate the configuration by clicking on the Activate Configuration button from the toolbar. Since this is a training PLC, we can work with trial licenses to proceed by entering the correct security code and clicking OK. When prompted to restart Twincat in run mode, select OK. Twincat has now restarted in run mode, as we can tell by the green gear icon in the status bar. Let's log into the PLC and see the live values being displayed in our variables. This is the analog input value from the laser sensor connected to channel 1 on our analog input terminal. We can see the raw value changing as I point the laser sensor to different positions. Let's log out and create new local variables to convert the analog value from raw integer values to engineering units. Let's log in to see the scaled integer values to engineering units. Now we can see the scaled variable is showing the distance measured by the laser sensor in millimeters. I had previously created a visualization for this project, which we can use to see the I.O. visually. Let's test it. I'll also open the I.O. window and put them side by side. I have a normally open switch with 24 volts connected to channel 1 on the digital input terminal. You can see the LED indicator turn on and off as I toggle the switch. Next, let's look at the EL2809 digital output terminal. I have mapped the first four channels to toggle switches on the HMI. We can turn on the outputs by toggling these switches. You can see the output bits turning on as I flip the switches. Next, let's see the laser sensor connected to our analog input terminal. The HMI is showing the distance measured in millimeters. It is changing as I'm pointing the laser sensor across the room. That's pretty cool. Finally, let's see what's going on with our analog output terminal. I have linked two of the four channels to two dials on the HMI. The dials have an output from 0 to 100. These values are scaled to integer values in the range from 0 to 32,767 in the main program. So a value of 100 results in integer value of 32,767 which results in 10 volts at the output channel of the terminal. You can see the output voltage varying as I turn the dial. I can even enter any integer value in the text field directly. Let's check channel 2. It is also working nicely. Hope you've enjoyed this demo. I'll hand off to Akil now. See you next time. That's all for today's video. Which I.O. terminals have you used in your Tencat projects? Do share your experiences with other terminals in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, then please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future tutorials. And as always, thank you for watching and keep innovating.